Howdy folks, I'm Blossom Blueberries briskly blazing through backwater bushes. I'm Amber. And Amber, why are we blazing through backwater bushes? Why not? I don't know, and I don't know how. I guess we are like rocket blueberries. Let's get started. Alright folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for glowing up after my divorce and not before? I'm a 53-year-old female and I've been divorced from my ex-husband Larry, a 54-year-old male, for six years. Larry and I have two adult children, Steve, a 27-year-old male, and Clara, a 25-year-old female. Larry and I met in college when we were both electrical engineering students. We were both very much on the nerdy side and looked the part, but we're very attracted to each other, so I thought anyways. Well, we got married soon after we graduated and both worked as engineers. But after a few years, Larry decided that he wanted to go to law school to become a patent lawyer. In order to look the lawyer part, Larry underwent a major glow up during this time on pretty much all the levels. Tailored clothes, fancy haircuts, designer accessories like watches, etc. Along with working out to trade his dad bod for a lean gym bod. During this time, I was having and raising our small children while taking care of about 95% of the household matters because of his long working hours, all while working full time. I admit that I did not glow up along with Larry. My own appearance has always been on the plainer side. I'm not overweight, but I am a bit stocky. 5'5", 140 pounds. Simpler haircut, glasses, and practical clothes, not much makeup. Larry loved me as is for about the first decade of our relationship, but after he started working as a lawyer, he started to become drawn to more conventionally attracted women and had several affairs. When I pressed for counseling, he said that the issues were things like my big nose, my post-baby tummy pooch, not something that I could fix with a simple makeover. I was getting organized to ask for a divorce when Clara was hit by a car while riding her bike. She survived and is fine now, but needed several years of intensive surgeries and rehabs. In order to provide a unified front for Clara and Steve, Larry and I decided to stay married and be as cordial as possible. He continued to see other women during this time, but by this time I was past trying to get him to be faithful. We did separate and divorce after Clara went off to college. Larry is remarried now to a much younger woman, a 33 year old female. In a couple of years, I have actually decided to focus more on myself, including my appearance. Now that my children are grown and out of the house, and I don't have to worry about tiptoeing around a difficult husband, I finally have the time and resources to do so. I didn't get a nose job or any other plastic surgery like Larry wanted, but I did update my hair color, started working out more and lost about 15 pounds, and got a new wardrobe and actually started dating. I don't have a steady partner yet, but regularly go to the age appropriate singles events and go on dates. Unfortunately, my children detest the new me. In particular, they blame me for the divorce and are angry that I didn't glow up to accommodate Larry, saying that I was too selfish and lazy to do so when it mattered. My son Steve is getting married soon and says that he's too angry to invite me to the wedding. Clara has gone low contact with me. I had a great relationship with both of them until I started my own glow up process a couple of years ago, which was a few years after Larry and I finalized our divorce. Steve and Clara have told me that the only way to fix this and the only thing that would be fair is to go back to the way that I was before, meaning stop coloring my hair, dress in my former plain slash frumpy way and stop dating. They say that they are most upset about the dating and that it's not fair for me to be looking for a new partner. So am I the jerk for everything that I have done here? For not improving my appearance until after I get divorced, I really don't think that Larry would have been faithful to me no matter how much I twisted myself in knots. I feel that I did the best that I could given the energy and resources that I had, and while it may seem selfish, I do believe I deserve to have my own life now. But I am open to other opinions if I have done something wrong here. All right, folks, what do you think of this? Absolutely not the jerk. My goodness, what is going through the kids' heads? Like, oh, I know you took care of us all this time while dad was running off cheating, but you, you're the problem. And how dare you be happy now that, you know, you're no longer with him? So the only reason why he was able to glow up and go to law school and do all these other things was because of the efforts that OP put in at home. Mm -hmm. If 
she had required him to pull his fair share of the work around the house, then he would never have had the opportunity or ability to glow up in such a way, right? And it's easy for him to sit there and be like, oh, you need to put more effort into your looks while doing absolutely nothing for the household, right? She put him through college for goodness sake, right? Yeah, like he, she has gone above and beyond for this man. And the level of ingratitude here that he gave her is despicable. Mm -hmm. And like, she's right, it wouldn't have been enough because time comes for us all you know she would age the fact that he's with a much younger woman now i mean give it another couple of decades and he'll probably be on an even younger one yeah well and that's it right i mean i think this is going to be a matter of like he when he started dating women who were more conventionally attractive because he felt like he could finally obtain that right and i'm guessing that he was trying to live out some fantasy from his younger years that he felt that he missed out on because he was too nerdy or whatever in order to, you know, get the, the hot women or something like that, right? And so I really feel like this was, he would never have been satisfied with OP, right? Because he was that too busy trying to live his own fantasies. Right. And so I really hope that the kids, like, maybe see the comments on this post or something and come to light that they are really in the wrong, that mm -hmm. they are blaming the wrong parent for the divorce. He chose to cheat. Uh, OP didn't make him cheat. Uh, being frumpy is not some horrible crime, especially when you're pulling the weight of the household. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like she was doing so much work here. And the fact that they're blaming her just shows how terribly ingrateful they are. Well, calling her selfish and lazy when she was, it sounds like, the one who nursed the daughter back to health after she was hit by a car. Yeah. Like that's, that's so selfish and lazy right there. So, such selfish. Much lazy. Wow. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And recent necessary... 362 says, not the jerk, it sounds like a lot of dear old daddy was in the kid's ear from the jump of this process. He painted you out as the reason he had no other reason than to abandon ship. Not the fact that he was betting anything that could walk. Go low contact for now. Your kids will either see their father for what he is, a narcissist, or they won't. Either way, you deserve your to love yourself and be happy for you. If you want to dress up like a model, so be it. If you want to dress down, the choice is yours. And look, no matter what you would have done, he would have cheated. So go love yourself and F him. He's married. He chose his bed. Glow girl, glow. And OP replies, I'm just sad about likely missing my son's wedding, as well as losing the closeness with my daughter. I'm hoping that they will come around eventually, but I guess for now, all I can do is give them the space that they are requesting, and in the meantime, go on living my best life. Alright folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for hiding my boyfriend's anime body pillow while my parents were visiting? My boyfriend, a 32-year-old male, and I, a 27-year-old female, have been together for a year. He's only met my parents once over the holidays last year because they live pretty far away. They've been visiting this past week, and since he and I just moved in together, they were excited to see our new place and get to know my boyfriend a little more. We have an extra bedroom, and this has become my boyfriend's gaming room for the most part, but we agreed that when guests come over, it would be a second bedroom. He really likes video games and anime in particular, so he has a lot of toys and artwork that he's collected over the years from different games and such. Well, one thing that he has is this anime body pillow that features a sexy anime girl on it. He also has a mouse pad for his gaming computer that resembles a busty anime girl. Before my parents came over, I asked him to take down his toys and stuff so that they could be comfortable. I was upset to see that he left the body pillow and the mouse pad in place. I don't really feel comfortable with either of them, but he's really into anime, so I've always just kind of left it alone. But I absolutely didn't think that it was appropriate to leave it in there when my parents would be staying over. I took the cover off the body pillow and I put the pillow in the closet and I put the mouse pad in the drawer in our room. When my parents arrived, we showed them to their room and my boyfriend noticed the missing pillow and mouse pad. Later, when we were in bed, he brought up to me and asked why I hid them. I told them that I didn't think that my parents would feel comfortable with those things in the bedroom and when they leave, we can put them back. 
My boyfriend got really upset with me. He told me that he feels like I'm ashamed of his interest in anime. He says that he spent his whole life feeling like people think that he's weird for just being into anime and didn't expect his own girlfriend to be just like everyone else. The next day, I noticed him taking some of his manga off our bookshelves and putting them into a box. I asked him why and he said something along the lines of, I'm putting them away so you won't have to look at them anymore. I feel really bad, I feel like I hurt him, but I just really didn't think that my parents would feel comfortable sleeping in a room with those items. But now he's just acting so distant and cold, and he's not really engaging with my parents at all. They keep asking what's wrong, and I don't know what to say. Am I the jerk? Alright folks, what do you think? No, not the jerk. And the thing is, like, you wouldn't go papering the walls of your guest room with, like, Sports Illustrated swimsuit models, right? Like more adult themed things they have their place but usually is not front and center in your guest bedroom yeah i mean i think that's really what's important here is that these things would make a reasonable party uncomfortable right they're not it's not a matter of whether they're anime or not it's the sexualization mm -hmm. of them right and there are certainly like things that are appropriate and things that are inappropriate and having overtly sexualized things for in your guest room i think is something that's going to make your guests feel potentially uncomfortable right and op needs to explain that again that this isn't about anime she's fine with him looking at anime what he what they aren't fine with is the fact that these were overly sexualized objects that might make people uncomfortable and that's a completely different ball game right now if she had been like oh i just don't like your anime and i think that the anime is going to make the parents uncomfortable that would be a, a different type of thing right mm -hmm. but again this isn't about anime this is about the the type the, the actual like sexualization of things right mm -hmm. but let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck and talking mice says there's a huge difference between anime video games decorations and sexualized anime content a busty mouse pad and a sexy body pillow would most definitely make anyone feel uncomfortable i get that it's his space too but i think a small amount of compromise for a limited time isn't a problem at all he might see you as being embarrassed of his interests, but the reality is that most people aren't comfortable with sexualized decor. It's not about anime at all. Not the jerk. He really needs to have more consideration for others. And OP replies, that's exactly my feelings too. There are other stuff in there that are anime slash gaming related that was left up, but it was more of the sexualized stuff that I didn't feel comfortable leaving out for my parents. If there's other anime stuff in the room that's still there, like that kind of shows that it's not a, a, a wholesale dismissal of anime. Yeah. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for kicking out a wedding guest for having a wardrobe malfunction? I am a 24-year-old female, and I got married last week. And for my wedding, I had set a black tie dress code and asked guests to come in formal clothes. On the day of the wedding, one of my friends, a 25-year-old female, came in wearing a scoop neckline dress. She was technically following the dress code, and there were lots of other guests wearing dresses that were strapless with low-cut necklines. The thing is, the dress was at least two sizes too small for her. She was very large-chested, and the dress looked like it was about to burst apart. Additionally, the dress was only supported by two spaghetti straps that were slipping off her shoulders. Throughout the event, she looked very uncomfortable and was constantly readjusting the dress because it kept slipping down. Well, around halfway through the wedding, she came up to congratulate me and my husband. The bodice of the dress slipped down completely. Literally, everyone stopped what they were doing to stare at her. She was extremely embarrassed and kept apologizing profusely. I immediately called security to escort her out of the venue. She swore that it was an accident and begged me to let her stay. She told me that it wasn't her fault that she had a curvier body and had a hard time finding clothes that fit. I basically said that it was her responsibility to find a dress that fit her, and she chose to wear a dress that was prone to a wardrobe malfunction on her body type. So she should face the consequences. She started crying, saying that she was humiliated enough as it was, and accused me of body shaming her. Most of my friends agree that I was in the right for kicking her out, but some have said that I was overreacting since it was an accident. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Yes, I think OP majorly overreacted here. From everything she says, it sounds like everyone is in agreement this was an accident. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like she was embarrassed and like to then just be like, yeah, I'm going to kick you out because of an accident that happened. Like, 
it just feels very, you know, blamey. Like, you know, the that Super Bowl halftime when uh, Janet Jackson's top got pulled down and there was like this big kerfuffle. It just feels like that all over again, that same vibe. Yeah, I mean, certainly, I think sometimes it can be really difficult to find a good fitting dress, mm -hmm. right? And maybe she had a dress that might have fit her at one point in time and she thought that it would work this time. And so she tried it on and maybe gained some weight in some places or lost weight in other places and... yeah well not to mention like dresses are made kind of around a standard build mm -hmm. like i have the opposite problem of like the dress tops are it's always if they fit my even if they fit my waist the top is just like way too big because i'm not a busty person mm -hmm. and some people have the inverse like if they want a dress that fits them at the waist the, then their boobs are going to be practically popping out mm -hmm. you know um and it, it is really difficult to find clothes that fit you well um so you know it just may be that because of her body shape it's really hard to find something that doesn't look like a trend like a you know like a garbage bag on her that fits her top exactly exactly so i feel bad for her because it was clearly an accident and op i feel like overreacted but let's see what the wheel of judgment has to say wheel of judgment turn 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 judge the jerks as they come out i don't know kind of what no no, wheel, 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 you've let us down. You've let us down, wheel. Yeah, stop the shaming. No shaming. <laughs> wheel, yeah, that's that's not polite. That's not polite at all. Definitely not justified here. <laughs> I think we have a sexist wheel. <laughs> Imaginary Practice 56 says, Yes, you're the jerk. Accidents happen. It would have been more appropriate to hand her a couple of pins to keep her straps in place. And OP replies, if she was wearing a dress that actually fit, I would have accepted that it was an accident and wouldn't have kicked her out. However, she chose to wear a dress that was way too small for her when she had several months to find something that fit her. And Alchemy Ali says, you're the jerk. Oh my goodness, your poor friend. I could never be this mean to someone. She made a mistake picking her dress or maybe it was her only one and clearly regretted it. She was uncomfortable. But what was she supposed to do? She was already there and was probably just trying to make the best and support you. She had a mortifying accident and humiliated her. I honestly doubt the whole room stopped to stare at her. But they sure did when you erupted. Ugh, go apologize to her. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here. And Amber, she has a joke. Max was enjoying his vacation until he was stopped on a dark street by a holdup man. Stick him down, cried the thief. Huh? You heard me. Stick him down. Don't you mean stick him up, asked, Mask. asked Max. Oh, no wonder I'm losing money at this. Dumb crooks. That's all we can say about that. And I have licorice spice. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy, fantastic, wonderful Wednesday, Friday, Junior's Eve, folks. Why fantastic? I don't know, other than the fact that I just maybe thought it was Friday. <laughs> Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. Then please, have it on shaming people. Don't shame people for things that are outside of their control. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye!